Welcome back to another episode of Tech Talk Travel. Today's guest is Christian Volk from Hotel Champ. Christian, great to have you on the show. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for the invitation. Happy to be here. Our pleasure. It's great to have you. Christian, let's start by your background. I'd like to um, dig in a little bit with that. We do this with every guest. We find a little bit about their backgrounds. And traditionally, you haven't had a hotel background or a hotel tech background. Um, so t tell us a little bit about what you, how you started and what led you towards starting Hotel Champ, being a co-founder of Hotel Champ and, and getting involved in the hotel tech scene. Yeah. Yeah, well, let me uh, start by telling how uh, the whole uh, story uh, started. So my co-founder, Kasper, um, was uh, planning a trip to the US uh, together with his girlfriend that we're going to do a road trip. And while she was booking the hotels, he noticed that every time she went to Agoda or Booking.com, she uh, did a selection and then went again to Google looked up the hotel specifically in that area and looked them up on the website whether the hotel liked her preferences. And, um, and Casper is quite an analytical guy and he thought to himself, this is, this is unique, right? He, she's doing every time the same pattern. But at the end of her checking the hotel website, she went back to one of the booking platforms and booked the hotel over there. So he was aware of the missed opportunity for all the hotels which saw his girlfriend coming by, but weren't able to convert them into a booking. Mm -hmm. Now, looking up this behavior, there's done quite some studies about this, and it's called the billboard effect. It's in the industry well known, and it shows that the majority of the people all around the globe show the same way of looking up a hotel. Now, the unique thing is in our industry is that hoteliers take the OTAs for a given, but from a guest perspective, that's not that logical. So, so that's where I think the journey started. Uh, we both have an online business background, so we are uh, known with building technology. We know that it is important to attract traffic. Obviously, you want to engage with that traffic, convert it for business purposes. So this is how our journey started, and this is where we knew that our added value with a stronger e-commerce background would really bring a lot to uh, this great industry, which is uh, very strong in delivering hospitality, but where it comes to driving online businesses, there are still yes. some stuff to do. Yeah, for sure. So from the time that you started, what have been the biggest challenges that as a company Hotel Champ has faced? And what would be your advice to anyone perhaps wanting to start a hotel tech company well, I think starting a company is both exciting and it's always challenging to some extent. And especially if you want to scale, then challenges become bigger. We knew from the get-go that if we want to make impact in this industry, if we really want to help hoteliers to be able to start getting back control over the future by driving more direct revenue, by handling their uh, uh, distribution spend, by being able to deliver hospitality online, we have to do that at scale. So building the tech was one, founding a team and, 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 and making them great was another, but doing that at scale, that is, I think, the challenging part because everything you do goes just faster and it, and it happens faster and, at a, and also at a bigger scale. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so my piece of advice is, uh, well, if, you, if you're really solving a pain, to uh, for a customer there is always a business and I would recommend everybody to go for it All right and some of the biggest challenges you faced well I think so obviously we are helping hoteliers with driving more direct revenue and the way we do it is quite innovative and we're using technology we're using scientific proven uh, uh, methods from uh, psychology, we're uh, using big data, we're using artificial intelligence, you know, th and if you combine that, you can make that uh, uh, quite a challenging topic for somebody to uh, grasp if they're not familiar sure, with it. Sure. So I think one of the challenges is, is how can you bring an innovative solution to a customer which is in a big need for that uh, but not necessarily has the knowledge or the uh, the background you have 
uh, to understand how it can work for you. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. So obviously you're, you're, you're experiencing growth as well within a company yeah. internally. Yeah. How would you describe the company culture of Hotel Champ and how do you uh, uh, maintain staff satisfaction and, and engagement and, and keeping the ball rolling as such? Because clearly as the, the bigger a company gets, the yeah. more interaction, more involvement, yeah. third party. So from, a, from an outsider's perspective looking in who might be interested in Hotel Champ, what's the company culture and how do you engage your staff? Yeah. Company culture and, and having a great team who is uh, happy is, is, is a very important thing to achieve your goals. I think the majority of our champs um, are attached to the mission we have. They really want to make an impact on the industry. You really see that they care about the, the guest, whether it's still a prospect or uh, it's, it's a customer. Um, and they really care about the end user, which is ultimately the billions of guests around the globe. And they want to move that needle. So, um, so I think that is a big part, which helps us just to keep people motivated because they're working on something which they care. Now, as I mentioned, we call our uh, people champs. Yeah. So that says a little bit about the spirit we have. Yeah. Uh, we like to, to, to pick up the, the gloves. We, we want to uh, go for this. Um, um, we want to go for this challenge and we want to be there the best. So I think those two elements being engaged with the industry and the mission we're after. And then secondly, uh, the spirit of, well, it's a team spirit, yeah. but we're all within that competitive, so we yeah. want to win as a team, yeah. that helps. Yeah, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. And in terms of your customer stickiness, and then perhaps converting customers to future ambassadors, what's the approach there? Because clearly a successful success, successful company has sticky customers, yeah. and customers that then encourage their colleagues, their peers, their even, yeah. even their people they know in the industry to also perhaps consider using a particular yeah. product. Well, uh, we, we can talk lengthy about this, but I think one of the biggest compliments we get is that uh, more often customers have asked if they can invest in the company. Right. So, that's I mean, cool. that's, I think that is a sign that they're not only to like to work with us as a, let's say, as a vendor, uh, uh, customer relationship, but yeah. more as, a, as being a backer of the whole mission. So, yeah. yeah, that's excellent, yeah. that's excellent. All right, let's talk a little bit about conversions. Okay. So from, from a hotel's perspective, a lot of hoteliers seem to think that um, direct is always best. Yeah. And in many cases it is, um, but it's not as simple as just getting someone onto the hotel website and then getting them to make the reservation. There's a lot of work that needs to be done prior and, and through the process. So what would be some of the key tips that you would give a hotel to ensure that they turn essentially lookers into bookers when they come through their direct channel? Typically you see that when bookings are low, people tend to, to start just to work harder. And that means the reflex is let's spend more on Google, let's spend more on my pay channels or any other way how I can boost that. Mm. We see the typical hotel website as a leaking bucket. So you can pour more water in it, but also more will float out. And it's really first by fixing your bucket, understanding who comes to your website, what is it which brings him and why is this person actually not converting. Because let's, let's face it, on average 99% of the people will leave the website without making any booking. Yeah. So. If you have the understanding who comes, what is his need, where is he actually in the stage of the process in his guest journey, is he just exploring or is he about to make a decision? Did he already see you on one of the other channels? Most likely he did. And if so, why is he uh, then not converting at that moment via your direct channel? Is that a lack of trust or is there any other uh, reason behind that? Um, and then of course, if you have that knowledge, which is predominantly based on data sets, um, um, then you must have the ability to adapt your website or your messaging or your touch point with this guest in his digital journey. Mm. And when you're able to adapt, then you're able to start to influence him and to see if you can uh, work on your business objective, which yeah. is 
in your case, uh, just uh, seeing um, the conversion rate go mm -hmm. up mm -hmm. and, and uh, bringing more direct bookings. So I believe that hoteliers have a strong uh, asset, which is their own website, which is a very important touch point with their guests or their potential guests in the whole guest journey. And they have the ability to let all the visitors who come by to try to, uh, to start engaging with them and to see if they can bring that 99 out of 100 who is leaving the website without making a booking to 98 or 97. Yeah, yeah. And that's, in all honesty, if you use the right technology, then it's, it's actually, that's, that's doable. Yeah. And, and, and there are people out there who can help you with that. Mm -hmm. I still have the feeling a lot of hotels, it is getting better, but I have the feeling a lot of hotels still feel they don't put enough um, investment both financially and time-wise in their website. Their website and their booking engine essentially is a personality representing their brand, yes. their hotel. Yeah. And as you said, it's like when someone comes to the site, how do you ensure that they're going to finish that booking? And I think it's all about how it's represented and how it's presented to them based on the experience that they're yeah. going to perceive when they're on site. Yeah. So in many ways, the guest journey does begin right at the beginning of the process, even before they're at the hotel. And I think the website and the, the booking engine have a lot to do with that with that equation. Yeah. I think they're a very important part. And I, I do see that changing, but I still think there's a lot of work to be done. What, what do you think? Well, I, I, first of all, I, I fully agree with what you're saying. I think there's two parts to that. So I believe that the guest journey starts at the moment a person starts to dream about his next trip and whether that is a business trip and is actually just uh, within a 24-hour uh, window or is something you are scheduling for your bucket list, which is in a couple of years. Yeah. And that whole exploration, which happens between the moment it comes up in your head and you actually press the book, bu book now button, mm. is, is, is the whole guest journey. And I think hoteliers are getting more aware that the guest journey doesn't start at the moment when they enter, enter the hotel and they walk over to the front desk. Yeah. Yeah, it starts literally quite often somewhere in the digital space. Correct, yeah. So, and the digital space is the moment where you can either achieve your business objective from more monetary uh, aspects. So let's say I'm driving my conversion rate or more direct revenue or I want to more having a more healthy uh, distribution mix. But equally, it is the moment people have a touch point with your brand. Mm. So actually, our customers, what we see is that, obviously, they want to drive more direct revenue. But they're also very aware that they want to work strategically, not only to the business objective, but work on their brand. Because thousands, maybe even millions of people have a touch point with your brand. Mm. And that's not what you see in your bookings, mm. because the people who book via your website is nine out of ten times just one percent of all the people you had a touch point with. So the the exponential people, the, the exponential number of people who had a touch point is at least as important. Mm. And those people will maybe not book today, but they are a future guest, mm. maybe already tomorrow mm. because they return, or. Um, um, within the next months or years. Yeah. And I think hoteliers who understand that obviously you need uh, a responsive website, you need a booking engine to handle your um, uh, bookings, but that they add a technology like ours, like Hotel Champ, yeah. which can interpret the data which uh, is actually already within your uh, digital space and maybe can enrich it with mm. third-party data mm. and then based on the data can start profiling your potential guests and trying to see if we can funnel them down further uh, towards the end of the booking uh, process leading to more direct bookings mm. and the ones where there's not the ability to convert them still making sure that they have the best guest experience which results in you as a hotelier driving real hospitality online mm. i think that's key yeah and um and quite often i hear hoteliers say we would love to work with you give us three months before we have our new booking engine up and running or give us six months because we're actually working on a new website 
And my advice is to everybody and always start working with us right now because the data insights alone will give you such a head start on your new project, whether it's a booking engine or your uh, uh, website or maybe even your CRM. Mm. And, and you can use that knowledge, which you're already gaining right now, uh, directly into uh, a an, an higher entry level with your new uh, piece of technology. Mm. Let alone the opportunity cost you have by letting for three months or six months all that people pass by your window and, and knowing that they won't convert uh, in the best way. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to touch a little bit on Google as well. Um, Google's making a very strong um, direction towards travel now for some time. Yeah. And um, they've also recently launched or expanded, if you like, the whole book on Google process, which is essentially offering a consumer the ability to search select and book their entire stay, whether it's flights, transfers, yeah. hotels, all within the, the Google ecosystem. And for some hotels, that could be an extremely um, appealing process because they would then think, well, hey, look, Google do this so beautifully. They wrap it up in such a nice uh, interface, a user experience. Why do I even need my own booking engine now? It's not necessary, right? I can just do everything through Google. Google. Not really. And, I, and I, 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 I'd like to get your opinion on the whole book on Google piece, how yeah. you feel that hotels should embrace that amongst their entire distribution strategy because it should be a part of an entire strategy, yeah. not just one particular piece. And they shouldn't become too dependent on, on one particular source in a similar way that the OTAs, they were with the OTAs when they first yeah. started. And um, we don't want history to repeat itself yeah. in that sense. Yeah. So what's, yeah. what's your take on the whole Google piece? Book on Google and how should hotels approach it? Yeah, first of all, I think your analysis is quite spot on. And, and um, but, but let's first zoom out. I think Google has always had within their strategy that they want to deliver the best user experience for the end user. And I think they of all have a lot of data that they see that the guest journey is currently broken. There are so many research done, how many websites people on average use before making a booking, it's, it's, it's actually insane. So I think they of all understand that aggregation of the supply is one, um, but at the same time, helping to make that booking process more user-friendly is another. And I think um, hoteliers have a big opportunity here. And uh, you will see indeed, see the whole distribution mix shift and which is actually not bad at all. Eh? Uh, the more players within that space, the better it is from uh, a consumer or an end user uh, um, point of view, which is the guest, mm -hmm. but also from a hotelier, because the more channels he has, the more he can mix out his um, um, overall cost of distribution. I think you're also right about the fact that within that there is a great opportunity but he has to start working on it right now because if he waits another five years then right. he probably will find himself in a spot where he missed actually the learning curve of using the technology mm. by then most likely the global uh, players somehow fought a way in mm. um, and then it's hard to catch up mm. so th that's mm. one but I think within whether it's the Google um, um, ecosystem, whether it's voice, and yeah, there's so much still happening. And most of us, let's face it, don't know that. I for sure don't know. I mean, we see the trends and you can see the parallels to other industries. That, so that's a strong helper. Um, but at the end of the day, we also didn't know in 2000 that nowadays we would already have self-driving cars yeah, or yeah. Uh, yeah, where we were with AI. So, um, so I think there are still a couple of variables we don't know. Um, but one thing is for sure that the hotelier has to find a way, start using his data and the digital space, seeing that not per se as a as a cash register, but also as a as actually an a billboard for his brand and his hospitality yeah. and um, because at the end of the day the hotelier can do that himself the best yeah and if you don't do that 
you become a commodity which is an uh, a brick and mortar yeah. uh, uh, building uh, with beds and rooms yeah. and there's really not so much room to differentiate right, right. And, and you cannot rely on the guest that they experience the difference by the time they're in because right. that's only a very yeah. small fraction of the whole yeah. uh, population exactly and of course data comes into that so let's talk a little bit about that how, how does hotel champ maximize that use of the data so that the end result is essentially as you described yeah. it for for the hotel and for the yeah. consumer for the booker yeah. going through the process on data there are a couple of challenges people have so everybody says data is the new goal and or the new oil which makes the industry uh, run and it's 100 percent right the problem is, however, is that a lot of people don't even have the right data. So, for example, the data set is too small. Mm. For most hotels, including the chains, the set is just too narrow mm. or doesn't have the right quality. So, it's not clean, yeah. it has duplicates. So, it's yeah. really hard to make an interpretation or to get uh, an abstraction of information out there simply because the set is, is not valid. Then the other thing is, of course, is if I have the data, how am I able to interpret it? And we have uh, data scientists working on the data. We have people with a psychology background yeah. interpreting the patterns we're seeing both in real life for, from best cases with our customers as well as what we see from the data. And, and that's where, of course, AI or machine learning comes mm. uh, around because you want to use those big sets and you want to bring those uh, patterns into something where in real time you'll be able to adapt and to uh, um, um, customize the engagement with every guest and you want to do that at scale because a solution like ours can do billions of variants but only a couple are relevant for you at the moment where you are in your stage right. touching this specific hotel right. So you want to be able to do that on the fly in a way that you as an end user, as a potential guest, have the feeling that you're actually gaining from this whole engagement rather than you're being annoyed or being yeah. distracted. Yeah. And, um, and I think this is the beauty with data and what we are doing with AI. We call this actually autopilot um, and we let um, autopilot run for you this personalization optimizing your business objectives and the beauty is that whether you are an individual hotelier or a chain and that you're able to match your data sets and enrich that with ours so that you're at making uh, at the most yeah, you're leveraging to the most the potential of the big set we have mm. in order for you to deliver the best experience yeah. and to work on your strategic goals. Yeah, yeah. In the past, hotels have struggled with ensuring their data is clean. Yeah. Um, there's, a, the, there's an old saying, which I'm sure everybody knows, garbage in, garbage out. Yeah. Um, if you come across a, 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 an example of that, how do you approach that type of scenario where you know you, you're getting tough data to work with? How do you turn that around to be an advantage for you? Yeah, so, so first of all, the, the rule is that only the clean data can determine the outcome. Yeah. So if there is no data or the data is not clean, we will just not bring it into the data set just because right then out. then you're actually polluting yeah. the clean set exactly. with, uh, uh, with the set which is, uh, is, is, is not valid. So that's one. But we have the ability to quite easily help hoteliers to clean their data, mm -hmm. yeah? especially the data going forward. I mean, cleaning data going backwards is quite often hard because there's simply data missing and you cannot make it up. Uh, but going forward, there are a couple of ways where we can help hoteliers relatively easy to make sure that their set is clean enough to work. Right. But whether that data set is clean going forward or not, we know that the real asset for them is in the set which is not with them, but is what, what is with us. Right. Because we have the set of thousands of uh, A-B tests, we have uh, sets of third-party um, uh, data which they will most likely not be able to attract themselves, let alone to uh, use them in the right way. So we see their data as the, the spark which, ex which ignites 
uh, the power of our data. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about voice and, and AI yeah. now, because obviously now with Siri, with Google, with Amazon, Alexa, they're all introducing their own voice-activated services. So people are going to start using voice now to do search for hotels and even book hotels through voice. It's starting yeah. to happen. Yeah. How's Hotel Champ approaching that and how's AI influencing that process? So the, the both are related. Yeah. What's Hotel Champ's um, approach towards that so yeah. to, to best work with their customers or your customers? Yeah, so I think at the end of the day, voice can be seen as how we approached in the old days online, right? Yeah. Um, hoteliers have an offer and they want to bring that offer across to potential buyers. Now, there's different media how you can sell them. And I see voice as one of the sorts of media you can do that. I think whatever the medium is, you see that the technology part is becoming bigger. Data, as you say, is, is becoming more important in there. So, um, and we also see that the big players, as you mentioned, Amazon, Google, um, and Facebook, they always have the end user in mind. Mm. So, um, years ago, Google said, we will help, or we will actually, um, um, we will stimulate uh, vendors to go faster to mobile by punishing people who don't have mobile first in their online strategy. Mm. And I think with voice it will be alike. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it is in the best effort for end users that people who offer the product, hoteliers, um, do that in the way which comes the closest to where the consumer is. And we also know, and that's reality, that as and hotel industry, you will always be a little bit behind because the consumers just go faster than you do. Yeah? But that's why I think it's very important that you start embracing technology, that you start using the data and the ability you have. And everything you do already now in the digital space is most likely replicable or scalable or the learnings you can use to adapt to go into voice. Yeah. Because in the end of the day, Voice uses most likely most of the same data we or the big players and, and, and also uh, a company like ours already to make sure that we understand the guest and that we bring uh, demand and supply together. Yeah. Uh, and then the medium is not so relevant. Mm -hmm. So my advice would be embrace technology, use it for your advantage. It will never take out the human part Let's also be clear about that. The beauty of the industry is actually is the experience, is the uh, human part that not only hotel, hotels itself can differentiate, but the service can play a vital role. And there's always within the human uh, part also the surprise or the, the unexpected. But you can use technology mm. um, uh, into your advantage yeah. to deliver a better experience. Yeah, yeah. Because there are a lot of things as a guest, where well, you don't need actually a human uh, interaction right, right, within right. anyone. Yeah. And 20 years ago, we would go to an offline travel agency to help us to schedule a flight. Nowadays, we think it is more convenient to just do that on your mobile mm -hmm. phone while you're in the subway. Well, it's essentially uh, becoming our own travel agents. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. so actually, and and. The, the old mindset is that by doing it for somebody, that is service. But, but the new mindset is, is that you, if you deliver it in the way that the, the end user wants it, it can be actually that he is serving himself. It's more valuable. But it's more valuable, yeah. as you say. Yeah. So, yeah. Which leads me to my final question. From a personal perspective now, when you book a trip, what are some of the most important things that bring you value, that make you feel like, that was a great trip and I got value from it. Business out of the site, you're, uh, you're going on a personal holiday. What is it that, that Christian Volk looks for when he's on holidays? Privately, my wife books the trips. Okay. So, um, um, I make sure that she does it direct, of course. I think the easiest way to, to, 
to get that is actually the human part which we were just touching on. Mm -hmm. It's it's we've eaten in so many restaurants in our life. We spent so many days in hotels. We've been to all so many places. Our generation, the generation, and below us. You know, we we haven't seen the world, but at the same time, we have been to so many places. Mm -hmm. And I think it's it's the human interaction which always make the difference. Yeah. So yeah. the restaurant or the hotel where you had that really unique experience where somebody did just that little bit extra which you didn't expect mm. or or something went wrong but it was turned around in a way that mm. Mm. and then you become an ambassador so yeah. those yeah. are the interactions which will always uh, stay with you yeah it's very interesting point you said that the the human experience versus the technology technological one and i think hotels that do it well they recognize when to apply the human contact piece at what point and and when yeah. versus when to make sure that the technology is engaged at the right time and doing its piece at the right time exactly. and it, it's a bit of a balance because i think every hotel's expectations or needs are different the customers needs are different so it's really a, a, almost a push and pull trying to work out the best way forward for that so any hotel that gets that equation right i think is often at, at producing a good result and having a good product yeah i think one last piece to that is that um quite often you see that um the users within companies who, who have to use a new technology first see the technology as an a vendor to their own job yes. yeah, where there's a revenue manager who thinks hey yeah. there's a revenue management system where there's a marketeer or a revenue manager who thinks like hey if hotel champ comes in then i'm out of a job yeah. and if you look at if you j just take pure players like let's for example e-commerce players then you see that they have just as many people or even more and they use so much technology to do so many processes yeah. so i think what we will see is that more and more processes which are today done by humans are will be done soon by uh, technology yeah. and we still need a lot of people we still need a human element yeah for that but also to run uh, the machines or to build it right. so right. and i think um, we will see that the equation goes further and further where more parts of the process will be done by uh, technology, mm. which I think is only good, which helps us to be either there's more time or more focus on the few moments where it is really important that there is a human being. Yeah. Because I think we're not there yet that we want to be served by a robot, maybe no. once. Yeah because Another we like the experience, yeah. but at the end of the day, we like yeah. that there's a sommelier standing at your um, table yeah. and says, look, I can tell you all about the menu, but in all uh, honesty, I have one bottle left in my cellar and I think it's for you. Mm. And whether it's true or not, mm. you will like the story yeah. and, and that will give you the experience why we are now talking about it with a big smile on our face. Exactly, exactly. So, yeah, very good. Christian, thanks very much. Thank you, Great Andre. to have you on the show. Thank Pleasure. You. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed that. Make sure you tune in next time for uh, our next interview. Um, so subscribe to our channel. Go to our new website. Download our apps. Check us out. We're all online. Thanks for watching. Until next time, bye for now.